Hello, I'm Amanda Stout, climate scientist for the National Wildlife Federation. It's August here in Washington, D.C., so there's no better time to talk about hot weather. The fact is that global warming is already strengthening heat waves. If steps are not taken soon to reduce global warming pollution, nearly every part of the continental United States will have significantly more 100 degree weather by late this century. With cooler than average weather across the Midwest and the Northeast this summer, it is easy to lose sight of the long-term global warming trend. However, it is not the time to let down our guard. Natural climate and weather variations are working in our favor this year. But we need to prepare for the years when the natural variations line up in the opposite way and combine with global warming to add up to record hot weather. Furthermore, let's not forget that the South and the West have been sweltering this summer. More extreme temperatures are already pushing wildlife and their habitats beyond their normal tolerance levels. Even worse, the public health implications are significant. Heat waves are more dangerous for the very old, the very young, as well as those who are poor, have asthma or heart disease, or live in cities. About a quarter of weather-related deaths are attributed to heat waves. The elderly are especially vulnerable because of their diminished health and that they are more likely to live alone. And black people are at higher risk because they are more likely to live in cities, to be poor, and to have asthma than other Americans. Fortunately, there are several common sense strategies for addressing global warming and the impacts of heat waves. Some also provide other benefits, such as energy cost savings, air pollution reductions, and improved urban landscapes. For more information, and to see the list of 30 U.S. cities we determined to be the most vulnerable to heat waves, please visit nwf.org slash extremeweather.